I don't know how else to explain this, but what I saw was no animal known to man. Let's get straight into that. I know what a bear looks like, especially when they stand on their hind legs. This thing was far from anything considered normal. Well, in order to comprehend what I've been through, I'm going to have to go back to when I was 17 years old. Four years ago in the middle of spring, I was on my break from school doing nothing productive like any teenager, but to my excitement, I was invited to go venture to the Sierra Nevada mountains alongside my grandfather and Uncle Tom. And so I agreed and the very next day we took to the mountains. An hour into the trip and I'm not the least bit bored because I was gazing through the lens of my camera, taking hundreds of photos of the tree-covered mountains. We arrived in the Waishon Reservoir, about 78 miles away from Fresno. We stopped by the dam for a quick bathroom break. As I went to use the restroom, I noticed there were some attached portrait photos of random individuals displayed upon a large pinboard before the bathroom door. About 10 or more photos were pinned there and they all looked new. I never really liked looking at those faces. Faces of people who had a life before they were stolen by some sick people. And before we left, I remember the last few words my mother spoke of. And she said something like, You stick close to Grandpa and Uncle Tom, no matter what. You boys better keep an eye on my baby boy. And that was always the case with my mother. Whenever I'd go out to the wilderness, she always had been uneasy about the forest. Bad hiking trip manual. My grandpa tells me when I asked that day, not caring to put much detail in that story. The most I'd heard from that story was that a hog got a good bite off my mother's leg and she was only eight years old. But I always speculated if there was something bigger behind the tail. At the time, there was nothing to be afraid of. Besides, we were packing some serious heat. We carried four revolvers, two 12-gauge shotguns, and a well-preserved World War II Russian rifle, Namusin Nagant, a weapon I have always dreamt of using. Around 3 p.m. in the afternoon, we were driving on this mountain and Grandpa makes a left turn into this ancient dirt road. Eventually, we arrive at this partially open field and with a few trees and rocks poking out. We parked close to the only exit, unpacked all of our gear and set them out. From there, I analysed the vastness of the field. The field space took up about 30 yards long and less than 50 feet wide, meeting on north, downward slope guarded with skin-piercing bushes. But around the end looks to be a hidden footpath leading into the forest. Beyond this ground is nothing more but pine trees surrounding every inch of the field. It gave off this ancient look. In fact, that entire land is a private area owned by the state itself. This land was not to be touched at all, otherwise we would suffer from heavy fines. As soon as Grandpa told me this, I got a little worried. But Grandpa was there to remind me that everything was going to be alright. He always had a way of calming me down. He was good at that. For the rest of the afternoon, we spent it eating before embarking on a hike through the slope. And the slope was not difficult to pass through, for there were plenty of spaces left for us to walk. And the hike turned out incredible. I got to take many pictures out of the forest. But while we were returning to our camp, I was following behind due to my attention being on the beauty of the wild. I found some footprints that closely resemble a human's foot, but bigger. And the footprints were too big to be a human's foot, yet it resembled a human's too well. The next imprint spaced between seven feet apart. And now I was about to take the picture, but I got the feeling that something was watching me, and it was close. From what I saw, there wasn't nothing around my perimeter, yet his presence was strong. I didn't want to stick around any longer, and so I caught up with the guys. Soon the sun began to lower itself down the peak of the mountains, 
and darkness began to creep its way before the moon. We had to start a fire for light. The rest of our time was spent bonding over telling funny stories of my family and learning the basics of holding a gun. They gave me this tiny revolver while they got to use the rest. Small, yes, but it does offer a strong grip. By the time the moon arrived, the forest was already consumed by night. By the time the moon arrived, the forest was already consumed by night. The male crickets stridulate their wings for the female counterparts and the entire black sky was blanketed with stars. It was truly a beautiful night and the right way to relieve stress. It was now 9pm and we were all chilling out in the cool air. Uncle Tom was out smoking a joint in the blackness of the trees, while Grandpa and I sat separated around the campfire, gazing up at the stars. Some time passed and Grandpa asked me a question that will forever change my life. Manuel, what do you know about Bigfoot? From there on, Grandpa tells me the true story of my mother's horrific incident that she received as a child, somewhere down south in some similar woods. My then middle-aged grandfather took his wife at the time and my toddler mother out for a hike. Everything was going swell until the next day after their arrival. The family went out for a nice hike and something attempted to abduct my mother when there was no supervision around. But to my relief, Grandpa reacted fast. So I hear your mother's screams coming from the trees. I tell Maria to stay put while I run into the woods. I ended up coming to a clear enough opening when I got a chance to see who took my daughter. About 40 yards away from me, I see this thing dragging little Rosie across the forest. Oh, it looked like some kind of ape with reddish brown hair all over its body. But it looked huge. Looked to be about eight feet or higher, and it was fast, real fast. And with the little time I had left, I drew my special revolver. Oh, the most powerful handgun in the world. But he came and I fire. You wasted him? I asked with great intention. No, he lived. But I hit it all right. I hit that fucker three times and the thing let out this horrible shriek of pain. It was so loud, so vigorous. I swear I fell on my ass when I heard that scream. The thing ran off looking injured. I never saw it again. What happened to mom? Was she okay? Nah, her ride was bent out of place. She couldn't walk no more. Apparently, that thing pulled Rosie's leg so hard it snapped the leg out of place. Thank God she was strong enough to bear the pain. Just not enough afterwards. What do you mean? I asked. Your mother became mute for three years straight and she became very nervous whenever she was alone. Hell, she even gets nervous around places with lots of trees. Damn. Yeah. Well, it took her three years to finally utter some words. And we were so happy that we got to hear her voice again. How exactly did she get taken? I asked. I don't know. I tried asking how it happened and she said she saw a red light flying around the trees. And when it got close to her, the thing popped out and grabbed her. Lights that turn into Sasquatch. Well, that's a little hard to take in. Well, you don't have to take my word for it. I, I, I don't know how else to explain it for you. So, you can go ahead and ask your mother what happened. You think she'll tell me everything? I don't know, Manuel. That was a very traumatic thing that she went through. All right. It's not that I don't believe you. I do believe you. It's just hard to process this. Same could be said for anybody who's seen what I've seen. Everyone is safe in their tightly knit together life until they run into them. And just by one glance at these things, all of your comprehensions in life are shattered. 
Not completely, but your views in politics and religion are challenged, and maybe that's a good thing. You gotta keep an open mind to stuff like this. Does Uncle Tom know any of this? No, I haven't told him. Besides, he's always skeptical about this kind of subject. He firmly believes that Bigfoot is just a hoax. So nothing will change his mind about it? Unless there's physical proof. Damn. A moment of silence had occurred between us until Grandpa got up and headed for the tent. I'm going to head to bed. You coming? Asked Grandpa. After that, we put out the fire and over the lanterns and went to sleep in our tents. To be unbothered for now. Around ten past ten p.m., we all slept in our tents that night with enough room to store in three people, but Uncle Tom preferred to sleep on his own. His tent was set a few feet from us, but was still close enough to hear. I could not sleep that night because I was contemplating what Grandpa's Bigfoot philosophy. All those broken branches and footprints, that could definitely be a Sasquatch. And then it suddenly hit me that I should have told the guys what I had seen. And I thought, I'll tell them what I saw tomorrow. And besides, the imprints looked a few days old. But that was even more discomforting considering there was something unknown to most people still lurking about. Eventually, I slept on my airblown bed for a few hours before I would reawake again at 20 past 2 a.m. I did not know why I woke up. It didn't feel like taking a piss or anything. But then I listened. It was quiet. Too quiet. The bugs have stopped chirping. The trees held still for a questionable amount of time and not a breath of air was emitted anywhere. I had every right to be concerned now. Hey, Manuel, you awake? Whispered Grandpa. And from his foldable bed, he slowly switched sides to face me. And from the expression on his wrinkled, brown face, he looked just as alert as I was. Yeah, I replied. Can you hear anything? No. I said. We stayed there tuning in on the environment for about a minute, and Grandpa then asked, You remember that gun I gave you? Yeah, it's in my back. Get your hands on it, but don't shoot yet. And without hesitation, I reached in my bag for the gun and whipped out the little weapon, hands slightly shaken. Grandpa did the same, but pulls out a large S&W revolver that completely dwarfed my pistol by comparison. And then we heard Uncle Tom's tent open and his footsteps near in our position. Guys, it's me. Open up, he whispered. And so he unzipped the tent and he checked his surroundings before he spoke. Did uh, any of you guys hear that breathing? Yeah, I did. That thing was going on for like five minutes, exclaimed Grandpa. Immediately, I felt dread when I heard that phrase. Wait, I just woke up. There was breathing. Oh, man. Who would want to mess with us? I begged Grandpa. I don't know, but don't freak out. It might be mountain folks or some large animal. Now tell me, did you see anything out there? Uh, there's nothing. It's completely mute out here. But I did find some trap. Right when he was about to finish, a small object hit his back as if someone threw it at him. Uncle Tom cursed when he picked it up. Dude, are you okay? I asked. No, someone threw this fucking rock at me, shouted Uncle Tom, who was met with anger, confusion, a little hint of fear. Grandpa orders me to pull out every electric lantern we had and set them everywhere. And with what little lights the moon provided us, our lantern's brightness made half of our campground seeable. But still, we didn't have a clue who threw the rock. We checked every corner while we could, and all of a sudden we heard another loud thunk coming from our north. A rock that could oversize a human 
hand visually was lying just a few inches away from the slope. When all of our lights met the slope, I was filled with complete dread, and the second I realized what it could be, the three of us slowly advanced to the slope's entry point, anticipating for the better or the worst. We approached the slope and spotted nothing with our beams of light, nothing but dirt, pine needles, and bushes. Grandpa, with his fingers itching on the trigger of his gun, decided to call out the trespassers. Who's that stumbling in the dark? No responses, just the ever-deafening silence of the forest. This was it, I thought. We have this thing surrounded. Surely it would run away by now. And just as I was shining around the dark, I spotted something unusual on the ground. On the dirt, there was a pile of rocks, and most of them had been compressed by an unknown weight. But when I focused on that spot a little more, I thought I'd see a mottled outline of what appeared to be legs crouching down. Almost there, but almost transparent. And suddenly, the invisible figure got up and ran away from us. It shook us all so bad we shot at point-blank range. It was gone now, but not for long. Grandpa demanded us to get back to the car and we started hauling ass. But just before we got inside, all the lanterns started blinking on their own. And this just encouraged us much more to move. We got inside and Grandpa took off the exit, regardless of all the gear we left behind. And luckily, the rest of our rifles were located in the back. Uncle Tom then asked for a rifle, and so without deciding, I chose the Mossy Nagant, loaded and passed it to him. And just as I was scanning my environment for that damn creature, the car pulled up with a sudden stop, just before this path met the grey road to civilization. Dad, the hell happened? Desperately asked Uncle Tom. I don't know, it just died cried Grandpa, as I saw him desperately trying to turn the car on. And then before us, in front of our vehicle, came this blinding orb of reddish-white light, with a synthesized sound wave coming from the very orb. The orb began to transform into a large, oval-shaped disc, forcing us to cover our eyes from the brightness. And finally, the light darkened, but a hulking figure walked its way through the disc, and the portal closed instantly behind it. I couldn't believe it. It was a Sasquatch standing before us. The creature stood upright about eight feet tall and engulfed in dense dark brown hair, save for the hands, face and chest. Oh, he was in great physical condition. And yes, I know it was a male. You could tell by seeing his chest. Not only was it jacked, it carried three aged bullet wounds and old scars too big for a bear to make. Well, he had no neck and his skull structure was large and sort of narrow. His face carried a mix of ape and human features with a beard outlined across his face. Well, his eyes, though, presented vibrant, red piercing orbs through the dark. And too stunned to move, Grandpa gathered every bit of breath and yelled, Run! We did so, dashed back into the campground with nowhere else to go and the Sasquatch repeated his deep yelps and hoots. But as we ran, I heard the screams of my grandfather, along with a series of strong snaps and cracks of metal. I cared, but not for that moment. I caught up with Uncle Tom, catching his breath. I didn't know what to do or where to go, but Uncle Tom uttered his last few words. Manuel, hide. Get yourself out of here. I'm going to distract him. He demanded, but his eyes carried much sadness and fear. No, no, not without you. Just go. I did what I was told, even if it was the hardest thing to do. I hid myself down the same slope, but hid myself deep in the trees, opposite the direction of the trail, and from where I waited, listening to Uncle Tom's last seconds. I heard the Sasquatch stomps approaching the campground, and it was met with a loud bang coming from the rifle Uncle Tom used. I couldn't hear anything else after the bang, but slightly muffled screams were the last things I heard before I felt a strong and short vibration underneath me. 
I waited there forever. Not for my ears to recover, but afraid if it was still out there. I would feel some more vibrations coming from the beast, but it never seemed to get close to me. Eventually, there was no more walking, and I forced myself to see. And I peeked my head over the slope, and I found nothing but the lifeless body of my uncle and a rifle lane next to him. When I examined him closer, I found him laying flat on the ground, limbs apart. My uncle's chest was caved in, with bones from his ribcage poking out from the sides. Blood was drilling out of his mouth and chest, and his eye had popped out of its left socket, hanging alongside his face like a thread. Tears prevailed over my will not to cry. I only cried for a brief moment before getting back up. I took the rifle with me back down the only exit, and where the jeep lay ahead, inanimate, and with the front door open, and blood smear, and spattered all across the interior. I found Grandpa's entire body, shoved underneath the missing steering wheel, and with his bald head and arms sticking out, combined with his frightful expressions of pain written all over his face and a small puddle of blood in the front seat. I refused to cry once more and ran on the road back down to civilization. Descending down from that mountain seemed like an eternal nightmare for me. I was clueless as what I was supposed to do and where to go. All I knew was the path we had come from, but it didn't take long for the beast to find me again. Now he began taunting me with his alarming yelps and hoots. There was nothing to see but shadows and trees. I had no idea where to shoot, and so I blindly fired to all of my surroundings. My ears went deaf momentarily, but I still shot, cursing at the creature just to take me now and get it over with already. Soon the violence had ended when I noticed a speck of light coming from down the road. I didn't know if I should trust the light, knowing what it might be, but thankfully it was just a car, and I could even hear the engine. Relieved but still under stress, I ran towards the car to meet the patrollers and have them take me away. And after that night, I was sent to the hospital, and I was met by two nameless men in business suits. They ordered me not to tell anyone the truth of what transpired that night only to identify the creature as a bear. Well, naturally, I got pissed and argued with them, but they won the intimidation. My four years have passed, and my road to recovery still goes on. I am no longer dependent on drugs or afraid of my shadows, but I still shiver in slight fright whenever I see a great herd of trees. To this day, I haven't opened up about that night with anyone but my mother, until now. Eventually, the abductions began to slow down shortly after a year, but reported sightings of an invasive humanoid remained strong in the Sierra Nevada. I don't know when I'll get back up those mountains, but when I do, that thing huh, better be ready for me, because when I come by and I find him, I will not hold back. Wow, 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 wow. Certainly another one. Wow. Absolutely awesome and chilling Sasquatch encounter there. For the incredible mind of Masked Ant. Big thank you to the author for allowing me to narrate their incredible story on the show. And I really do hope you enjoyed my rendition. Guys and girls as ever, you know the drill. Please do let me know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help with the channel and our community further. Why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. If you're an aspiring writer or would just like to have a crack at things, want to get in touch with myself at the usual email as on screen, which is DMT. Forest of Fear at gmail.com. I really look forward to hearing from you. I hope everybody's had a great week at work or school, whatever it is that you do. 
and are trying to keep fit and focused during these testing times. But above all, guys, remember, be safe, not sorry. <laughs>